my son deserved to die with dignity. We need to be careful not to provide an out. They're petitioning the state for the right to end the life of their 13-year-old brain-dead daughter. Belgium became the second country in the world to legalize now euthanasia. Spain is all set to become the sixth country worldwide to legalize euthanasia. Headlines in early 2014 when it became the first country to lift any age restrictions. Every single one, she knows what that is. So I think she has a right. I think she has a say. The right to live. The right to die. Pain, suffering, public humiliation, loss of independence, loss of their ability to enjoy life. They are forced to watch their loved ones grieve because of them. How can we stop this? How can we make this better? When dying is too painful, when there is no hope that everything will improve, there is the option of euthanasia. The dying have the right to speed up their inevitable death. Euthanasia is the painless killing of a patient suffering from an incurable and painful disease or an irreversible coma. Here in the Philippines, euthanasia is illegal because the practice is considered morally unacceptable in the Catholic Church. But there are some countries like Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Canada, and New Zealand where euthanasia is allowed. I also personally agree with this practice mainly because the goal of euthanasia is to relieve the amount of pain and misery that the person is experiencing when he is alive. It is the easiest way to end the suffering. Just like what this woman decided to do. Hello, I'm Emily. I'm 24 years old and I'm from Belgium. And this documentary is about my request for euthanasia because of mental suffering. And when you see this documentary, I'm, I won't be here anymore. I also agree with domestic healing since it was already given that these patients are at the end of their terrible battles with incurable diseases. And maybe this decision is the best way to put up with that. Them choosing to end their life with their consent is I think still a human choice that they could have. It's like what this doctor said. We have to accept that we cannot cure everything. And his role when he can cure is to try and relieve the patient, to relieve his pain. Michael is a former police chief that suffers from terminal jaw cancer. Uh, at the very beginning, he told me I will uh, struggle up to the end. Uh, you know, I will do all my best to to be cured. But actually, all the very heavy treatment didn't work. So now he's given up. Time has come for him to stop his life because his life is not his life anymore. He has been too fed for nearly one year now. So he said, and I'm like a dog. I feel like a dog with a leash. You know, it's a bit uh, inhuman. Là, vous êtes, euh, vous êtes au dernier soir de votre vie. Tout à fait. C'est réglé le match. I support the idea that some incurable patients should have the right to euthanasia rather than forcing them to live a lifeless life. We should let these people free to end their suffering and to finally give them the peace that they deserve, just like the life of Aruna Sean Bog in India. Aruna Sean Bog lies alone, a patient in a hospital where she once worked. She spent her whole 42 years in a vegetative state as a result of sexual assault. 
The attack cut off oxygen supply from her brain, leaving her blind, deaf, and paralyzed. Aruna became a forgotten figure, abandoned from her family until journalist Pinky Verani wrote a book on her and filed a petition for euthanasia in the Supreme Court of India. However, we can't ignore the debate on this medical practice. And here are five arguments that go against euthanasia. Number one, it devalues life. Some people fear that allowing euthanasia sends the message it's better to be dead than sick or disabled. Some societies have regarded people with disabilities as inferior or as a burden on society. The argument against this is that Able-bodied people look at things from their own perspective and see life with disability as a disaster filled with suffering and frustration. I had so much pain, I could not take it. I was in deep trouble. Yeah, 3.30 with pain. Yeah. The subtext is that some lives are not worth living. Not only does this put the sick or disabled at risk, it also downgrades their status as human beings while they are still alive. Come on, Edward, deep breath. Number two, the alternative argument. The alternative argument says that Advance in quality care and mental health treatment mean that there is no reason why any person should ever feel that they are suffering in poverty. According to this argument, if a person is given the right care in the right environment, there should be no reason why they are unable to have dignified and painless natural death. Those experienced in hospice care say that the greatest fear of dying is not physical pain, but fear of being abandoned, either by family, society, or both. Number 3. Medical Ethics The medical ethics argument states that legalizing mutination will violate the International Code of Medical Ethics, which is a physician shall always bear in mind the obligation to respect human life. Asking doctors to abandon their obligation to preserve human life could damage the doctor-patient relationship. It could be lead to a lack of compassion when dealing with elderly or people. In turn, people with complex health needs or severe disabilities could become distrustful of their doctor's efforts and intentions. They may think that their doctor would rather kill them off. The slippery slope argument. The slippery slope argument is based on the idea that once a healthcare service starts killing its own citizens, a line is crossed that should never have been crossed, and the dangerous precedent has been set. The concern is that a society that allows voluntary euthanasia will guarantee change its attitudes to include non-voluntary and then involuntary euthanasia. Thus, it is argued in order to prevent these undesirable practices from occurring, we need to resist taking the first step. Lastly, the religious argument. These practices can never be justified for religious reason. For example, many people believe that only God has the right to end the human life. This belief is shared by members of many faiths. Although some individuals may personally feel that there are occasions when quality of life becomes more important than sanctity of life. But according to the Catechism of Catholic Church, Everyone is responsible for his life before God who has given it to him. It is God who remains the sovereign master of life. We are obliged to accept life gratefully and preserve it for his home and the salvation of our souls. 
We are stewards, not owners. It is the life God has entrusted to us. It is not ours to dispose of.